What is going on with the Las Vegas real estate market for the month of February? And that's what I'm talking about today. Let's roll. everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor, and I have a special guest with me today. Well, hello, Ange. Hi. I'm Rob Howell, rock star realtor. I'm the realtor, you're the rock star. Exactly, and <laughs> it's been a week or two since we've last seen each other. Yeah. But we always look forward to doing our monthly market updates. And well, and uh, of course, we've been talking a lot in between. Yes. Uh, so we've been updating each other with what we're seeing out there. Um, and it's, wow. Oh my <laughs> God. We thought, we thought things were crazy <laughs> before. Yeah. We really, I mean, I really believe that, you know, these, there were some unprecedented things happening, and there were. Right. And now it's a whole new level. It it's is just, another whole ball of wax. Yep. I just, uh, I've, I've, you know, in 12 years, I, I've never uh, experienced, I've, I've had some close, but hyper crazy. Yes. It yes. really has been nuts on the, uh, on, on really just the people coming here to purchase and what is available. It's just, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is nuts so. So today we're going to go over the numbers for February 2021. Okay. And you got to remember, February was a short month. There was only 28 days. So with only 28 days, these numbers are just phenomenal. Yeah, it flew by and we packed it in and you can see it in the numbers. Yes. So I always like to go over, um, obviously, single family homes. We don't go over condos or townhomes. And the first number that we're going to go over is how many listings sold last month. Right. And there were 2,767 single family homes that sold, which is actually up 4.9% from January and up 12% from the prior year. Yeah. From, wow. From February of last year, right? Yeah. So, so I could probably have guessed that we would be up from last year, but 5% from the month prior is pretty good movement, especially with the limited inventory. So, yeah, I did so not expect that number at all. People are, yeah, and why it's unexpected is because they're, it's just because we know that our inventory is short, so people are vacuuming up whatever's out there. <laughs> if, it's, if it's something that can actually be sold, uh, that people can get their hands on and buy, it's getting grabbed up yeah and that's just with the, what's on the mls not what you're seeing in the new home market yeah and that's so. a whole nother ball of wax as i said i've done a video on what is going on with new construction homes in yeah. the las vegas valley i just posted it last week pay attention to that and it's yeah. very important to know what's going on with both right. resale and new well, construction. especially right now because they really are together and they just can't build them fast enough. No. They can't build them fast enough and people are looking, you know, they'll go to the resale market and they're and they'll say, "Wow, there's there's I'm not finding what I want." Then they then they go to the the new home market, which is a little bit reverse. A lot of times you'll take somebody to a new home sale and they'll go, "You know, I see it's beautiful, but let me check out this new home market. Let's see if I can find a, a you know, bang for my buck." Right. right? Well, they, they're they're jumping over to new homes because they can't find any of the resales. <laughs> right. And in the new homes, they can't build them fast enough. No. Nope. So that's especially with the lumber shortage or the increase in lumber. Yeah. That's, that's the yeah the, all the all the uh, their uh, all the materials are costing more, and they just can't find enough. They really can't find enough people that even build them. Right. And I find it interesting too because February 2020 is before the whole C word hit. Before. Um, that we were doing right before, the, yeah. um, what's them call it? Uh, the lockdowns? The lockdowns, yeah. before the lockdowns before happened. lockdown. And like I said in last <laughs> market update, <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't you have a song with lockdown? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should play it. <laughs> <laughs> you can throw it in, I'll send you the MP3. Okay, we'll play his song on lockdown that lockdown. him and his friend Aaron Michaels That's right. did. Uh, A-A-Ron. A-A-Ron. But anyway, you know, February 2020 <laughs> was actually set to have a banner year for yes. 2020. Yes, I was having a very strong February moving into the March. Right. And, you know, uh, happy pre, uh, you know, lockdown 
COVID days, folks. Yeah, Yeah, because we're about to have our anniversary for when it all began. Yeah. I believe it was March 17th in Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I think the 13th, Friday the 13th is when they started announcing over that weekend. Other, yeah, Yeah. other places, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of crazy. So that brings us to the median sales price. Mm -hmm. And for three months, we were stuck at 345, 345,000. And we finally increased, which is no surprise, to 355,000, a 10,000 increase, which is actually 2.9% up from the prior month, but up 12.3% from the prior year. Okay, so why that's significant to me <laughs> is because of the, you know, you say that uh, the, we kind of stayed steady for the last three months, would, which would, even the fact that we stayed steady for the last three months was pretty incredible because that traditional, those are traditional months where we're not seeing that kind of strong, right. uh, you know, even if it's continued sort of strength, we're not usually seeing that. And then to, to suddenly just, you know, uppercut in, in February to yeah. $10,000 more means there was some contracts that were really uh, going up in value. Uh, and I think that next month we might see an even, I know. I know. I was we're going to see. I know. March is right. going to be a lot right. higher. And this does not include, once again, new home sales. <laughs> no. So or we know, condos or townhomes. Right. This is all single family yeah. homes. So we know just from our experiences and what our buyers are having uh, when they go to buy new homes, we know that those are going up it, like basically every week. <laughs> they're, they're, they're new new uh, new price increase. You yeah. Know. So... Yeah, uh, we're going to have more increases. Yes. And, you know, if you're not too familiar with supply and demand, it's basic economics. Yes. You know, we can't support the amount of people who want to buy right. for the amount of inventory that we have on hand. Yeah. So what's happening is it's causing bidding wars. Yep. Absolutely. And yes. you're getting multiple, multiple offers on properties. And, uh, you know, people are fighting over those properties to, to get them. They're really fighting hard. One of the reasons, this is a great point, And I want, because, you know, here come, you know, the, the boo the boo birds, so to speak, <laughs> that are going, boo, here comes the bubble. Right. Um, well, here's the thing about that. I, I think that what we have are market forces that are more organic and natural. And that's what you want to see. In other words, there's nothing in my mind that is sort of spurring this other than people wanting to, you know, maybe get away from some of the states that they're in and and relocate and find really more affordable options. And Vegas is a very affordable option along with other cities that are having a same, a similar thing happen. Right. So why that to me is significant is because when people say, oh, we're in its bubble. Well, what I actually think will happen if it, you know, eventually, uh, and I'm projecting out strength for a while, but when we do start to tear off, in other words, that, that, that demand that is coming from other states, if they start to tear off, I think it's going to tear off, not tear off. Right. So when you say bubble, I don't see a pop. I see right. maybe you know slowing down and then and a tearing down effect and a sort of an evening out of having more uh, listings on the market and, and the available buyer sort of evening out, right? That's what I think is more organically happening rather than something just coming along. Unless there's a new unknown factor that enters in, I don't see it just popping and suddenly values going down. Yeah, Not I think that at all. we're going to stay like this for all of 2021 unless right. the sellers come out and play. But here's an issue for sellers wanting to list. One, where are they going to go? Right. <laughs> you got to have a plan there, right? They got to have a plan. And this is across the country. This is not just a Las Vegas right. issue. Everywhere across the country is feeling the pinch when it comes to low inventory. Yeah. So if a buyer or a seller wants to sell, where are they going to go? Are they going to yeah. upsize? Are they going to make a lateral move for more money? It, sometimes yeah. in their, their case, it doesn't make sense to sell because now because of the limited inventory, they have nowhere to go. Yeah, there's a number of reasons why we're not getting enough listings on the market for sure. Uh, I, I, I would... Uh, you know, my little thought and why I wore my Golden Knights uh, <laughs> shirt here today is because the Golden Knights are, they're the hockey team in Vegas. If you don't know that, I don't know where you're at, but <laughs> uh, they are on fire. They just have been winning like crazy. They're hot, hot, hot. And just like our market, they are hot, hot, hot. And I expect if we do see a slowdown in our market, this is my little thought for the day um, or maybe this month, the right, update. right, right. If we do see it, it'll be around the time when the Golden Knights might slow down 
whether they go all the way or they make it to the playoffs, they're probably <laughs> going to the playoffs. But that's like September. Yeah. So that's my uh, little thought for you. When hockey slows down, that's maybe when we see a little slow. But that's all the way in September. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how it, that, that means increased, you know, potentially this continues to get even stronger. Yeah. And no one ever thought that this year would be far crazier than last year because last year was right. pretty crazy in real estate. Right. And this year that to me is, is far more. Yeah. Um, and no one thought, everyone thought, I'm going to wait till next year. And another factor too is with Biden. Um, extending moratorium. the the forbearance and the eviction moratorium, then we're not going to see an influx of homes coming on the market. And that happens to be around September that they're doing it till. So I thought that was June. Um, well, maybe they did. They, they originally talked about September. If um, I didn't get the update and you did, I'm sorry. But either way, wrong. even let if it's June. Let us know in the comments if you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let us know. But even if it's June, by the time that actually starts having an effect, right. it's probably closer to September or, right. or August. And then, you know, if people's forbearance, if they can't make up or however the forbearance is going to work, and then they start going in the pre-foreclosure process, that means that's going to take at least six months before that will transpire as well. Sure. And I think what you're going to see, here's the thing, that there's a lot of equity out there. So these people that are in trouble, they're, they're going to pull the zip cord before they... Uh, yeah, I before would. They, they, they go to, I mean, my goodness, if you're in a trouble situ situation, think about selling long before you let it go to foreclosure. That's exactly. for sure. So Take advantage the, of the equity. The, uh, the only glut that I could see of listings coming on could be those kind of listings that where you get some, uh, uh, you know, troubled uh, listings. Um, I'm, I'm, gosh, I'm, I'm spacing on what it's called right now, but that's how I started in this business. <laughs> was uh, REO? Uh, not REO, but they call Short sale? They are short sales and REOs, but they're called uh, listings. They are, uh, <laughs> oh my God, it's when Pre foreclosure? People, no, it's when people are in trouble. Uh, they're, uh, I'm absolutely blanking on this right now. Maybe I'll come up. I couldn't think of fire hydrant the other day. So sometimes I have. Our brains are fried. Yeah, yeah. Um, but either way, if, if those people start to have an issue, they have a lot of them, most of them, almost all of them, considering the time they would have bought, have equity in their home. They yes. can sell the home and then they can take that money and hopefully be able to get back on track rather than just letting a home go to foreclosure. Right. My yeah, I mean, almost everyone has equity no matter when they bought it, but some may have more than others because over the last year, people have gained tremendous amount of equity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and most of those people that might be in trouble, I would say, by large leaps and bounds, are not going to be the people who bought in the last year and a half or so, right? True. So it's mostly True. people who would have, you know, I mean, you got a lot of casino workers. And right. I mean, we don't want to get into all that, exactly. but there's a lot of, a lot of, if you could guess, types of things that would be, uh, that would be, you know, we could kind of point, a, you know, go a, a to B on, say right. this is how that happened. So that brings us to the luxury market. And the luxury market is filling it too because there were 95 homes over a million dollars that sold in the month of February compared to January's number, which was 81, a 14 home increase, which is huge. Right. Well, it's great. And especially in the luxury market, that's, that's a, a, a large movement. And that has been a continuing trend. Um, I think that it, the interesting thing that I, something I don't always see or I can't recall seeing in my uh, career is that the, the all markets sort of are, are really, really strong. Right. Like all the, it doesn't matter where you're talking about real estate. Right. It's, it's really all strong. And even, even in commercial, I've been hearing that they're still doing pretty well. Wow. Which is uh, surprising in a lot of ways. But um, yeah, all across the board. Yeah, and that puts the median price in luxury a uh, total of 1.56 million compared to January's 1.53 million, which is a 30,000 increase in median price for luxury. So that's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, it's significant. Yeah, and we talked about, you know, all aspects of homes, if it's in the million range, if it's in the middle range, or if it's in the low range, are seeing multiple offers. Yeah. Now, a food for thought on this, and, and I think about this, if people are moving from California, a six $700,000 home is compared to our low $300,000 homes. Most of the homes in California are built in the 60s, 70s. So 
they can buy and afford if they sell that home and then buy the the same house half price i mean yeah they're golden well, this is exactly what drives that's the driver for the you know the values to go up because uh, their thresholds are much higher than ours and they come here and they go all day long i'll throw an extra 30 grand right oh really yeah <laughs> okay so <laughs> and most know. of them are cash buyers because they too the california market is extremely hot right now they're getting multiple offers so a lot of these buyers um have extreme equity in their homes which is interesting it's hard to understand why california market would be you know people where there is an exodus that is still having a strong market there so people still want to be there i don't know uh if they're, I don't know where they're coming from to go into <laughs> California. We don't know why that would happen. Right. We don't work out there as much, but, or we don't work out there at all, but we don't really have as much understanding for what would be happening in California as here. Um, so that's interesting. You know, I don't, when does that spigot turn off? I've been kind of thinking that to myself. When has it become hard for people to, in other states to move because they are not really getting the buyers to buy their homes? Yeah, and I think that our market would be even more busy if the people who are in the other states, because a lot of them are waiting for the vaccine shots. So a lot of them don't want to make a move until they get their vaccine and then they want to relocate yeah, here to the valley. Comfort. So right. could you imagine just how much more crazy? I mean, that's the only word I can think of crazier that the, it would be yeah um well i and i guess i can look this is wonderful but there's there's a point where things just don't make sense and i i you know it all makes sense right now to me but we get too much more and it, it starts to be like how is this happening right <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be one for the books and honestly for prediction purposes i don't see the market really slowing down until next year, 2022, due to the fact that if the forbearance ends in June, that gives about six months for people to either decide if they want to go into pre-foreclosure or not, list their homes. I mean, there's a lot of factors in play on that. Yeah, that might increase some inventory, uh, you know, depending on when the moratorium's up, might increase some inventory. A couple of things in there that, that you, you, you we're, we're looking out for. We're trying to see what's going to happen there. Right. And anyone can say this or that, but in all honesty... No one can really predict what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you just can kind of put your hand, your fingers on the, on the pulse of things, you know. I, I think it's interesting that a lot of... I did think landlords might want to hit the eject button, but what they're finding <laughs> is that they can get higher and higher rents, which is also a cause of people moving here because they're not just coming here and buying. Some, of these, some people are so frustrated with the process, they're like, you know what, let me I'm see if rent. I can find a rental right. for a while and, and wait this out, um, which... The interest rates right now are driving people to not do that as much as possible because these interest rates are really, really incredible at the same time. So but they are increasing. They are increasing. So what happens there is an important factor. That's another thing to, to, to keep an eye on because you have two two things for some those some of those investors. Do I want to cash out at the very, very height of the market and sell my home and not and pay current capital gains taxes? which we have heard um, they might change with the new uh, administration and whatnot. They might uh, oh. jack those up. Oh, wow. So some, some, uh, some landlords might be thinking, I was one of them selling my, my property right now. Uh, I'm thinking this is, well, historic highs for the market. I'm going to sell. Right. You know? And the only thing that's keeping them not from, from not doing that is that they're getting in, insane rent prices, record rent prices in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. So what happens with those things, interest rates and what are the rent? Yeah, and if you want to come to Vegas and do short-term rentals um, or six-month rentals, it's going to be very hard to find because a lot of these homes are in master plan communities and master plan communities do not allow Airbnb or short-term rentals. Right. So... If you're looking for a rental, then I suggest find an apartment. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think you can do what you can. Anything is possible. Right. With a little bit of this. Right. You're going to need some money. Right. Because, I mean, you know, those short-term rentals, they know. I kind of wish I had uh, several properties that I could just short-term yeah. rent right now. I'd make a freaking yeah. killing on it. Yeah. Do a it. lot of people are making money off of the short-term rentals. Um, but anyone that are in the... HOAs is going to be hard to find in any of the nicer yeah. areas. Yeah, unless they're sneaking around a little bit. But, uh, you know, for maybe if they're thinking short term, I didn't say this, but if they're thinking <laughs> short term, uh, the process would take too long before there would be any issue. But I don't know if that's all worth it. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. 
So for February, we had 3,017 new listings on the market, which is actually up 6.4% from January and up 6.9% from February 2020. So we had more listings. Yeah. And that's probably why we had more sales. Yes, absolutely. It's helping it for sure. Yes, exactly. But those listings are getting eaten up like hungry hippo. Yeah. They just get gobbled up. Yeah. And I, you know, I was thinking, I think I even mentioned this to you in some of our conversations. You know, I'm getting a lot of listings and things seem to be uh, moving in that category. But I cannot base what my, what my, you know, experience or what my inventory, so to speak, is, is, is as a total of the market. Even though I'm getting some more, they're getting gobbled up so fast. It's just unbelievable. I uh, have you seen on your listings? Have they been mostly cash or both? The combination of um, mo- most. I've had cash, but they weren't quite competing with. Uh, really? The, yeah. Well, because here's the deal. This is very important for people to know. Okay. Um, uh, these properties, uh, the the loans that they, they have some cash. Uh, on these loans behind them. In other words, the, the buyer has some cash right. and they're willing to do an appraisal gap uh, difference. So right. if you have an so appraisal... So they waive the appraisal contingency or doing a gap? Not a, waiving a contingency, just a, a committing a certain amount to uh, if it doesn't appraise. Right. So in other words, if you have a $300,000 house uh, that you probably think is going to appraise at three, uh, 280, just for easy round numbers, right. 280, that that the the the, the buyer is coming that, in, that, and, that, that, that. <laughs> the buyer is coming in and 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 uh, and adding ten thousand dollars to to uh, any appraisal gap. They'll they'll put up ten thousand okay. dollars or whatever dollar amount it, to the appraisal gap. Huh. Um, so they're trying to do that, and that is helping them compete with cash buyers because cash buyers don't want to go well over the, what they think the market well, value some, is. Because a lot of my cash buyers have. Yeah, yeah. It really depends on the property and, and everything, right. and, and what they're trying to use it. But cash buyers that are not buying for personal residence, let's right. just say, right? Personal residence cash buyers. I actually say, hey, you want to get it, get it. You yeah. know, use that cash now. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, the ones that are coming in for investment, they they're going to have a little bit lower threshold. Right. So the financed offers um, are coming in and, and competing with them by doing that, abridging a gap in appraisal ahead of time, yeah. saying we'll commit this much to doing so. Well, a lot of my my I have I work with both mostly cash buyers, but my um, finance buyers basically what we have been doing to outbid the offer is waiving because they have cash on hand too they're going to be putting 20 percent down or a hundred thousand down or half down so that they're waiving the appraisal contingencies on their end so that their offer looks really so they're just completely waiving them. waiving so if they bought the house for five hundred thousand and it appraises at 450 they're willing to pay okay. the difference okay so that is that is that is the very strongest that you can be in, of course, to just completely waive it. But I think that you're still talking in the, in the in the listings that I've had. They're they're still they're not going to have just an open ended amount of money right. to right. to say we can throw towards this. So, but yeah. it is very very. It helpful. depends on the neighborhood. It depends on the situation. It depends on the buyer. There's a lot of right ifs ifs and right. that ifs then and buts. Kind of but yeah, you, the, the, speaking of a but, you should, that's something that, that you should understand. And it, you know, these properties are getting multiple offers on them. So there's, there's, I mean, it's kind of sad because there's a whole bunch of them that a couple of months ago might have been strong offers overall. They're yeah. giving lists. They're not asking for any 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 closing costs or any extra goodies in the offer, and it's still not enough. It's not even close. The, yeah. The, the, there'll be more than half of them that are already that are out of the out of the running. <laughs> yeah, and I just did a video and it posted on Monday on um, should I buy a home in Las Vegas for spring 2021. So pay stay tuned to that. Or you know, it's already posted by the time this goes up. So pay attention to it. All right. My thoughts on if you should buy or not buy. All right. That is the question. So there were a total of 1,677 single-family homes listed without offers for the month of February, which actually is down 27.6% from January and down 60.4% from the prior year. Wow. So, in months past and months previous market updates, we were always hovering around the 7,000, 6,000, 7,000 range of homes without offers. 
we're down to 1,600 single-family homes without offers. <sighs> and to parse it even further, which I did an analysis of what is going on right now, as of March 7th, of how many homes, which are condos, single-family homes, and townhomes on the market. And that's 2,813 homes, okay? So then of which 764 of those are tenant-occupied homes. So technically, if you take away the tenant-occupied homes because we know that those aren't selling fast or they're not selling at all because some are locked into next year, whatever it may be. So if we take away the 764, that brings us down to 2,049 single-family homes, condos, and townhomes on the market right now. So then, if we parse it even further and take away the condos and townhomes, that leaves us with only 1,539 single family homes on the market wow. for sale as of today, which is March 7th, with a population of over 2 million people. Right. So I'm gonna go throw a couple more numbers in there <laughs> because we have, well, you could add in, let's just say there's 2,000, uh, you know, 1,500 roughly, whatever, new homes right. that are out there. True. Let's just say that, but uh, there's like 15,000 buyers looking for homes. Right. At least. So, and there, some of those are sidelined. So maybe there's even more that are just kind of waiting it out that yeah. they want to buy, but they're just feeling like, well, geez, what do I do? So you got way, 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 way more demand than yes. supply. Like, like, it's way more. <laughs> it's 10 times. <laughs> yeah, maybe not quite 10 times, but it's up there. It's, yeah. And that's why you're seeing, you know. Uh, Multiple offers. I, I, I opened up one property for a six hour showing period. We had 20 showings, wow. 12 offers. Wow. It was in six hours. Wow. There you go. You have to be a really good listing agent to be able to handle all those offers. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that's another thing. <laughs> I think that uh, if you are you really want to make sure you have an experienced realtor. Uh, somebody on both that, sides. On both sides. But really, in the listing world, you got to have somebody that understands these things. Uh, it is not as simple as it sounds just to, uh, hey, you know what, the market's great, I'll just get anybody, or hey, I'll just, uh, you know, won't pay them what I think I should because the market's great. Be smart. You got to have somebody that's going to make you money. So it's like, you know, penny smart, nickel foolish. Don't do not do that. Yeah. Be, get somebody that's going to really help you get this done and win the day because when you do that, you end up but Making it, more money. Yeah, the, the 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 evidence is all there that you. But with a good realtor, none of these I buyer, none of these internet realtors, or one percent listing, one one percent listing. You know, I, you got to get somebody who knows what they're doing because I'm just telling you that even though it sounds easy, all you got to do is put anything, any old thing up, and it's going to sell right now. There are a number of things, and I'm dealing with a number of stresses right now that. We're going to get through, but without experience and understanding, right. I can tell you it will get a lot harder. Yes. A lot harder. And you really got to have somebody that can navigate that for you, even even in the really good times. Yeah, exactly. Almost especially. Yeah, because they're going to need to know what's the best offer, what's the best offer for you to consider, yeah. all the other negotiating strategies to help you come out on top. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not always that clear what is a good offer. What, right. may, you know, Just because they're paying cash doesn't mean it's a good offer. That is true. There's a number of things that you have to be aware of. And there's always something new to learn, too. So yeah. can you imagine, 12 years, I still I, I still learned something new that I have to, you know, and that's now a new knowledge base for me. Right. But, you know, somebody that's not been doing it that long, uh, boy, I, it's just... I'm not saying they can't do it at all. It's just be careful. <laughs> well, be put smart. it this way. There are like 19,000 real estate agents and brokers, or maybe 17,000 and 15 of them are actually real estate agents mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Right. That's a lot of agents. Right. But there's a lot that aren't working or making money. Right. You know? And that 2,000 of them out of all of that are inactive agents, but still 15,000 agents. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's, it's just kind of numbers to think about. Here's the, here's something I, I, I hate to say, but if you're an agent right now and you're not making money, if you're not doing deals right now, I and at least getting out there and working hard to get your buyer that property, uh, what is going on? You got to reevaluate what you're doing <laughs> to get your business. I'm hiring. I'm actually hiring a buyer's agent now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want one of those, though. One that I'm talking about. I mean, I don't know. No. Maybe. It has to be a good agent, but if you want some strong leads and you want to make yeah. some money, 
you need to come work for me. Yeah, if you want to learn from the best, there you go. Exactly. I'm also hiring an assistant, my personal assistant, administrative assistant, transaction quarter, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> so that brings us down to the months of supply. So last month we were at 0. 0.9. This month we're at 0.6. Oh. So again, take into consideration the 754 renters that'll probably bring us down to what, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.4? Mm, yeah, somewhere in between 0. 0.5 yeah, and 0. 0.6 probably, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely low. That's what, two weeks worth of inventory? Yeah, 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 basically two. What? <laughs> it's when you put it that way, it's just like, oh, oh my, my goodness. God. Well, that's, I mean, it makes sense because these, like I told you that I basically sold a property in six hours. I've got yeah. another one that's going to sell over the weekend. I've got another one that sold in 24 hours. I mean, yeah. you, these things are not, if they're good, if, they, if they're priced, I mean, Priced well is so different right now than what it was even <laughs> two months ago. Yeah. You know, you're, we're going over what we think things are and, and trying to make sure that we're not way the hell over where it's just not going to get any any activity. But still. I think regardless if it's a property, is if, like if it's a body, it's getting, it's, it's looked, getting, at. It's getting looked at. It's getting looked at. You know, right. If it's semi-decent, it's getting looked at. But the number of closings um, that closed within 30 days was at 66.7% for February and the month before was 64.4% and February 2020 was 50.4%. So actually that's a huge increase from February 2020 to February 2021 with the amount of listings staying on the market 30 days or less. Now we also think, and we always say this, that this number would be a lot higher if there was not 10 occupied homes. Yeah, yeah, that it's, you know, it's, it's a weird thing because the, I think a lot of the things that we could say, well, this would happen more so if this wasn't happening, are actually the reasons why we're this is happening. So it's it's really inverse and like, I don't know, it kind of eats itself. Right. The, the, the weirdness <laughs> is all... <laughs> the overthinking and analyzing. This yeah. was that, this was that. <laughs> it, it, yeah. But hey, look, these are times to remember, historic times in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes. Historic. I... The home, my own personal home. Yes, I was going to ask about that. It was appraised. I mean, this was my, I, I lived in this home for a long time. It was appraised back in 2006, which was the height of the market, as everybody, as everyone knows, at $240,000. $240, That's what it was appraised at. I'm selling it well over that number today. I'm, I can't talk about the exact number, but I listed it at almost <laughs> so 270. So are you under contract now? I am under contract. Great. I listed it at almost 270. Let's just give you an idea of that it sold for more. Okay, I, it's an escrow for more. Right. So there's, there's, I mean, who would have thought, you know, that after 2000, now it has been a number of years, obviously, 14, well, yeah, 15 it took, years later. Yeah, you know, Las Vegas didn't shoot right up no, after no. the whole Great Recession. Right. It took us a very long time to gradually get up there yeah and now we just have some new market forces that no nobody really yeah. could have uh, anticipated no no one could have predicted this craziness and again it's across the country it's not just las vegas it's everywhere that's filling the same pinch um just because of the lack of inventory have we said that enough yep i don't know i don't know <laughs> but that wraps up our market update if you'd like to download the full report provided by the las vegas realtors i post a link down in the description below rob do you have anything to say about this crazy market any other advice my goodness we've said a lot and yes. i know that <laughs> this is one of our longest recordings ever and i you know i think i just feel blessed to be uh doing well at this time and uh being able to help people understand further what right. they need to do and be ready that's a big part of what we're doing. Exactly. And, you know, the good thing about Rob and I is we're both, we've always said this, we're yin and yang. He sells, I buy. Uh, he works with the sellers, I work with the buyers. And so we see it from both sides. Yeah. And that's that's on, that's on an average. She does have listings and, of course, yes, I, I do have buyers. Exactly. It's just, we're that's the scale right now. Right. I don't know. In time, man, she's going to be kicking butt, too. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I have listings that have sold this year, yeah. but not nearly compared to what you have. And right. I mean, vice versa, I have more buyers compared to what you have. So true. Um, it's just we have that expertise in those areas. Yeah, yeah. 
so we're blessed. Uh, very happy to, you know, see, this is all of this is about, I, to us at least, you have a problem and we have solutions to that problem. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Um, you're trying to find, you're trying to buy a home right now in Vegas. Yeah. We just gave you a whole ton of information. There. <laughs> yes. And if you need experts to help win, you get two winners here. Yeah. Right? That's right. We win like the Golden Knights, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but one more thing I want to bring up. Okay. And tomorrow is March 8th. Oh. And tomorrow, which when you see this, it'll already been, but I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Ah, uh, thank you. And Ange. I got you. What? <laughs> This is a card, a surprise. Uh, I mean, I would have gotten a present, but I've been too busy to really. I, I mean, don't by the time that I thought of getting something, which I had an idea what I wanted to get you, it was already today. So I got well, you a card. Thank you. That is unexpected. Really unexpected. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I probably you won't know. see you tomorrow. So should I open it here? Yeah. Now? All yeah. right. All right. Un momento. Like Karnak says, no. <laughs> you don't know that. That's that goes way back from Big, the movie Big. And no, it's uh, it was J Johnny Carson. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. On your birthday, you'll hear from Facebook friends from you'll hear from Facebook friends from all over. Okay. Oh, she did get me a gift. Oh. Read read this part first. Thank you, Angie. Which automatically makes this paper card from me even more special. <laughs> which you're darn right. You're darn right. I, should I save the... Yeah, you the, can read it. Okay, okay. We're going to... Uh, hold on. The lighting is... Do you want me to read it to you? Um, that would be special. Okay. It? Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can read it. I got him a gift card, so he can buy whatever he wants and treat himself. <laughs> so happy birthday, Rob. Sorry for the lame gift, but hey, maybe you can treat yourself on exactly what you want and need. LOL. <laughs> Thank you for all your support and guidance you have provided this past year. Aww. I consider you a true friend. May your day be filled with peace, love, and happiness. Oh, Ange. Your favorite Las Vegas realtor, <laughs> Angela O'Hare, because she's everywhere. That's right. <laughs> oh, you're, you're bringing a tear to this emotional Pisces eyes. <laughs> well, I'm a Cancer, so we... <laughs> yes, we have the emotions. Yes. Thank you very you're much, welcome. Ange. I can't believe that. It's so nice. Yeah. Really, the, the message is what's so important to me. Exactly. Thank you. The gift is always the thought, yes. and it's wonderful either way. Um, I didn't expect that. But yes, March 8th, I'm the big 4-5. Four, 4-5. Five. Four, five. Five. He's a year younger. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> a year and a half younger? You're, you're coming up soon. <laughs> coming up quick at about noon. I don't want to say how old I am. <laughs> Can you guess? Well, I think you just... Yeah, I know. Right. I just kind of gave you him... You kind of blew I, that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and smash that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Rock on. And do it peacefully. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you on next month. Or maybe you'll see me on you see us on my channel too. One of these days I'll get that edited. <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs> we'll see. All it. right, Peace everybody. Out, guys.